Hey, hello everybody who's watching this video. This is going to be a little different because I think you can tell by my um, mic quality that I'm using a different mic. <laughs> so I'm spacing out my words. I'm just trying to think when I'm trying to trying to formulate my thoughts um so the reason for the new audio sound I don't know if this will sound better or worse but my old microphone that I, I use is a studio microphone and that fell during I was recording another wrestling playthrough. I plugged into my old OG Xbox and everything was working fine. I was going to do the Fred Durst challenge for WWF Raw because I did the challenge for... Um, that was five for New York. And I wanted to continue doing more wrestling challenges because I have a lot of wrestling games for the OG Xbox and some for the 360. And I like to record everything that I've done. Well, if like the characters I created throughout the past generation consoles, just to have it on YouTube for myself mostly. And just do like um challenges because I never beaten I, I didn't know you could even unlock Fred Durst and WWF Raw until I saw the video recently. And I was like, you know what I'm gonna try to go for this. My WWF Raw C D worked for like a day. And then I turned it off, and I like saved all my char the new character that I made. And the next day, it just stopped working. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll put a pin into making wrestling games because I spent about over two hundred dollars in video games. So I was just. Excuse me, if my mic just picked up the burp, or my headset. But, uh, I spent about $200 in video games, so I might as well just do that. Just play video games. So, then my mother decided to replace the tiles on every room. So she, so she left my room for a lot. So I was like, all right, let me just move the microphone out of her way and just put it, put it in the living room, basically. You know, just out of her way. That way, the mic doesn't get destroyed or anything. It's not in her way or anything like that. And then somehow it still got in her way, and she bumped into the mic twice. And the mic broke. <laughs> and that... Not just that discouraged me, but also my mic. I was, I've been working on it for weeks. Trying to fix this audio problem on my new laptop. That it just made me sound like a robot. And... Like, I had somebody from support, HP support, helping me, and they couldn't figure out the issue. I, I've been working on it for two weeks, looking up solutions on, like, forums and YouTube, but nothing was working. And then it just, it breaking just made me go, damn. Just, damn. So then... I decided that 
What did I decide at this point? I was discouraged at this point on making a video because I planned so much time into making more videos for this channel. So I was just like, I don't know what to do next. Like I was going to make wrestling videos, doing challenges, and then I scrapped that. And I just t uh, threw away my OG Xbox. I was going to do more live recordings. Instead of just like edited it once, you know, for like... Um, for like... Um, the challenges... Like how I did for my Def Jam one, where there's going to be a long version, which is still heavy edited, edited, but it shows you everything that I did. And then there's going to be uh, another heavy edited, another version, the short version was going to be heavy edited. And... I think I think I I don't know I think I'm done making videos this year <laughs> because I spent so much time just looking at a screen and I don't know I, I guess I try to make this hobby into a full time I guess that's what I'm trying to say and I should just keep it for a hobby right now because The Def Jam video took me about two days to record everything. And then on my first day of recording Def Jam, I lost. I guess I'm just going to tell you how the sausage is made at this point. But I lost all the audio recordings of my first day. Because I recorded for like five hours straight. And then when I was done recording, my audio was not being recorded. And that discouraged me. So then I rethought about it. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to record. I'm going to YouTube back. You know, like... Like Twitch acting, but YouTube. I, I'm just gonna record the gameplay and the audio separately. And the way I decided to record my audio was through this video editing software that I'm using called Shotcut. And oh, that was that was just a terrible choice at my part using Shaka to record my audio because as soon as I was done recording for all of my um for like how long is it seven hours of audio it was all delayed. Like, my audio was just straight up delayed. So, I had to manually place the audio to the video. Excuse me. I had to manually place the audio to the video. And that took me th three months. Three months.
and me editing the video took longer than me playing the game. That is crazy. So then I did that. Just day and night, just waking up, going to work, coming to work, coming home, editing the video as much as I can, going to sleep, waking up, going to work, coming back from work, editing the video. Like, I just did that for three months. And then it got to the point where I'm like, this is going to take me even longer. So... I'm just going to take my laptop and start editing at work. And I, how I say this, I'm happy that I did the video. And I'm just gonna say this real, right, real quick as well. The the video of the Def Jam me of me playing Def Jam. It's not my first time playing Def Jam with the no gym run. The f because before I decided to buy the video recording, the pound cable for my OG Xbox. I wanted to see if this was even possible, so I beat it without recording it. Because the whole point of me getting the pump cable is for me to beat Death Champ without going to the gym on the hardest difficulty. And then as soon as I did it, it was possible. I My first playthrough of it took me longer than my second playthrough of it on YouTube because the magic crack fight that fight is insane like I literally got lucky on my first time playing it like <laughs> extremely lucky like blaze just took care of my problem and I was like whoa and then on my second playthrough which is up on YouTube, that, it was insane how, how close to my favorite that, that fight was, because I think I beat it on my second or third try, and I was just, I, I just couldn't believe it, <laughs> but, yeah, I was planning to, to um, make more wrestling videos. Let me take a little sip of water. But yeah, I was planning to make more wrestling videos because I have like a lot of them. Not all of them, but I have a lot of them. And what else? I guess what I'm trying to say is that I spend a lot of my time just editing one video, looking at a screen 24 seven, and it's just not good for my health. <laughs> And I'm not really seeing a lot of benefits from it, but it's just a hobby and I should just keep it that way. So I don't know. I think I think this is going to be my last video that uh, I released this year. Because I need to just work on myself. Damn. And I was also, I was, I was also planning to, 
drop an album this year as well. But I don't know how that's going to be possible now because my studio mic is just unexistent. But me and my homie Bill, Bill, Bill High, Billy High, we're going to make a album together. And I guess that fell into the wayside as well because... Oh, damn. <laughs> I just... My mind is just rushing, and I'm just trying to <laughs> make sense of it all, I guess, or just trying to tell everything in a course, in a straight story, just being straight to the point, but I'm just scatterbrained. I guess yeah I guess I said everything I, I wanted to say like I want to continue on doing more video game challenges but I think I'm done for this year this is gonna be my last challenge playing this game on Heroic. Because I was having a lot of fun playing this game. Like before playing this game, I was watching the reviews. And the reviews were not good. So, but it was on sale at the time. I think it was on sale for like $2. And... I was just like, all right, I know the reviews aren't good. I saw the gameplay trailers, and I'm just going to give this a shot. Before playing this, I was playing Destiny. Destiny 2, to be precise. I was just playing the PvE, not PvP. And I was not having fun. Like, I find, <laughs> I find myself... Every day that gaming is just not for me. Like, franchises that I used to like are just crazy disappointing at the end, I guess. And I just don't like the direction that video games are heading towards now. Like loot boxes, microtransactions, and... I don't know. It, it's just not my thing. So like when I was playing um, Destiny, I was just like, I'm not really caring for the story. The gameplay feels good, but when I use my big ultimate attack and only do 5% of a boss's health, it doesn't feel good. It just feels... Oh no. But when I was playing this game, I was thinking about my every movement. When should I invert? How enemy patterns? And I, I just really liked it. I liked it so much that I wrote my first review. Not a good one. But just trying to do like a bullet point thing because I wasn't going to write a full 
structured sentence. <laughs> Wasn't gonna write a full paragraph. I just wanted to do bullet points. So I gave it like uh gave it a five. But I also gave like my gripes with it. The crazy thing is, I I just been playing a lot more running guns because another game that I really love right now is um well it, like the beginning of this year when I, before I started playing was it before I started playing Def Jam I was. Feeling that video games wasn't for me, like, the way I'm feeling right now. <laughs> and I started playing a game that got added to the Game Pass was Blazing Chrome. And Blazing Chrome just, like, rekindled my love for video games. And I was like, oh, I want to play more games like this. This is such, like, so much like Contra. So I was like, I'm gonna buy Contra now. I bought the Contra collection. I've beaten all the Contra games in that collection. And then I beat in the Probotector. And I was like, this is awesome. So then I bought Contra Road Court, played like one level. <laughs> and I was like, this is so bad. But then I started playing more games, like running guns. So like I bought Bleed One and Bleed Two. Bleed Two is a really sh well, they're both really short games, but Bleed Two feels like uh, an upgrade to Bleed One. So it's really good. I highly recommend Bleed if you like running guns. And then, like I said before, I bought like $200 worth of video games. And a lot of them is like running guns. And I haven't gotten a chance to play them. Like the only games I played that I bought were The Club. Which I was planning to do a video on. Did I say The Club? It was uh, Punch Club. Because the club is a different video game that I own on my 360. I'm also looking for um all the upgrades because I'm planning to do a video on it. <sighs> Just a video on where to find all the upgrades. Because I think I saw a comment, somebody saying, where did you find the upgrade for this? And I didn't see anybody else upload a video on where to find all the upgrades. So that's what um, I'm doing. If you just see me just like searching. Uh, Man, but the whole situation with the C virus feels like it got a lot of people rethinking where they where they see themselves in life. And that's where I'm at as well. Just rethinking 
my whole strategy now because I Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. There was a um It was a video I watched and they laid it to perspective that I guess kids like or just more people in general like, if you ask them, like, uh, what they want to be when they grow up, a lot of them would just say a YouTuber. And I guess that puts into perspective, like, the number one thing people want to become is a YouTuber. So it's just them wishing to be famous. And... I guess that just puts it in perspective for me because, like, of course I want to do YouTube. Shit. Of course I want to do YouTube, but, like, I don't want to just keep doing YouTube because the experience doing everything by yourself being in a monitor just looking at a screen being like it's just a a higher demanding time of a job more than a nine to five because you just it's a lifestyle at that point. Like, you just live and breathe just being a YouTuber. And I don't want to just live and breathe watching a screen and just sitting for a majority of my day, just recording, editing. Is. I should just keep it as a hobby than trying to make it. Yeah, I guess that's it. Just trying to make it. Because everybody's trying to make it. Like, my whole progression of being a YouTuber just. Like, I, I wanted to be. I guess a, a rapper? And also a fighting game content creator. Um, so I just wanted to make vi fighting game videos. But I also needed to learn how my equipment works. So I, I think I started it off with... No. The first video on my channel is Doom Video. Because I was trying to upload two doom clips to another youtube channel i think they changed their name now but it was like doom hubs and then that got me nowhere because i needed to activate my account or something so i don't think they even saw my videos but like that's I had a YouTube, I've been watching YouTube for a long time, and I'm sure like everybody else has as well, before they decided to take it serious. So then, the first video I made, I believe, was a Tekken video. And I've been thinking about making more Tekken videos, but it takes forever to find a match, and I, I just became impatient. Like, I just wanted to play match after match, and Tekken isn't built like that. And also, the online just sucks. Hmm. 
Man, where was I going with this? <laughs> oh yeah, my progression. So the, the whole idea was just me doing that. And then I also needed to get warmed up to the mic. So I decided to play other games because I needed to get better with my equipment, needed to get warmed up to the mic. I also made a couple of songs. And it's just been like a progression. So I my channel just dabbed away from damn from creating from being a fighting game channel to just being me just doing stuff. And doing videos with my friends and all that. Like, of course, I made music, but the the music I made is not a good quality. But it, sh it just shows my progression. And then I decided to make the... What did I decide to do? I guess that's it. Like, I was trying to do um, YouTube and just playing video games full time. And I had a small group of friends who were down doing that as well. You know, they were trying to get their channels all set up and all that. And then. Then I just stopped having fun. Because it. Stop being a hobby, and it was more just me trying to gain eyes, I guess. I, I don't even know how to say it. But, like, I guess because you're, you're no longer hanging around with your friends, you're hanging around with other people businesses at this point I, I guess you you can say everybody's trying to build their brand and there's a certain way you have to act or they they want to be perceived on the internet so your friends who used to just joke around or uh, just have fun playing video games are no longer you're no longer having fun because they are no longer the same characters who they are off, off, <laughs> off the public eye, I guess, off the internet eye. So it just became more stressful than fun. And I, I was gonna do um, I was gonna do um. live streaming but I I like I was getting people to join but it, it was just like the business part of it with my friends was just not not strong like I had a friend who like, damn like we'll, we'll always get views for like playing Yu-Gi-Oh or Roblox. Like we were getting people. And we had a good portions of our friends just moderating and just chilling, you know, having fun. And I uploaded those videos on YouTube, the Roblox videos. Like we had groups of people, there were people in chat. Not all of them, but um, we were getting, I guess we, we could have had something if we continue on going with like a, a, um, a schedule, but I don't know, it, it, it just stopped becoming fun, or just stopped being fun and just became too, 
dressed for. I, 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 I like people just change in front of a crowd, and I just stop having fun. And I just want to have fun while just being entertaining. So I stop streaming. I still hang around with my friends and we're still good. But I never told them that I stopped streaming because of that whole scenario, basically. So I realized streaming was not going to be my future. Or at least for now. I don't know what the future will hold, but at least at this moment in time, uh, 100% sure that streaming is not going to be my thing. So then I decided to upload video games that I love playing, but I know that they're not going to get any, any views because they're pretty old. And that's what I've been focusing on. Video games that I just like. I just love playing. So like you see Monster Hunter. Which I haven't been playing Monster Hunter at all. And they're at their final update. But I'm just not playing Monster Hunter anymore. I've been. I was playing Saints Row. But I stopped playing Saints Row. Because. I hate it. I hated what they've done with the franchise. Just in general, like I have so many. They, they could have done so many great things with Saints Row, but they just kept on making choices that I just didn't agree with, but it's their game. I'm just a fan. So they just. Keep doing what they want, but I just stopped supporting Saints Row. I just didn't agree with... Like, I was talking to my friend who I used to play Saints Row 2 with and Saints Row 3rd. And uh, he was like, oh, what, what happened to your like, Saints Row? Like, I know you used to love playing Saints Row. And then, like, I just went on a... Like, just went off, and I was just talking about, like, how much I just don't like Saints Row because of the decisions they make. I guess to, like, elaborate on that is just, like, the way they did Julius in Saints Row 1, where apparently it was going to be a different cutscene of him running through an alley trying to save your character. But instead, the enemy's gotten lazy, and he's looking at a watch that he doesn't have, and then the boat blows up, which makes it seem like that he planned it. So the entirety, sort of from what I hear, the entirety of Saints Row 2 is an accident. It wasn't supposed to be the way it did, and then Saints Row 2 became a classic, but they never... establish what happened to Dex and then we will never know what happened to Dex because I think all the DLC for Saints Row are not canon so I don't even know if the Saints Row 2 DLC people count it to the canon or not so so there's that and then there's the whole character achievement And then there was the whole character assassinations that happened in 3. Where Gat, Shandi, no, Gat died in 3. So Shandi and the boss just stopped acting like themselves. Like, boss from the second game to the third game is a completely different character.
and the character assassination of Shandi, which is the thing. The thing is, I don't have a problem with them doing that to Shandi. I just wish they elaborate more to it because Gad and two stated like this is people that he has worked with. So I just would have liked them to to build upon it. And I feel like they could have if in get out of hell. But instead of Shandi they used Kenzie. And I don't mind if Kenzie was like the Oracle like trying to help them out, but like why build this whole mindset for Shandi and then not build upon it? Like like what the hell? <laughs> just Just have them talk. Like Shandi just tells Gat how she changed because of his death and provides some backstory why Shandi feels this way and how they first met. But no, they they pick Kenzie, which I don't have a problem with Kenzie, but I feel like they could have done so much more with Shandi. And then, if you wanted wanted to know what happened to Dex, they they, they pretty much answered that and got out of hell. It <laughs> just told the longtime fans just to f off. <laughs> or what they did to the Dex, man. When I was replaying Saints Row One, I remember how much I loved the characters in the first Saints. Like, seeing Dex and Troy again, it was so, I guess, nostalgic. It was so good seeing them. It was like seeing an old friend again. But... It's their game. Yeah, they can do what they want. I just stop caring, and I hear that there's rumors for a new Saints Row game coming out, and I'm just like, I, I just don't care anymore. So, I wish they just gave Saints Row a Resident Evil style remake. Just combine one and two and just fix the story. Because I didn't even buy, um... The hell is it called? Agents of Mayhem? I didn't even buy that one. And it, I think it takes place in the same... Universe? I don't know. But yeah. That's why... So like, Saints Row... I don't think I'm gonna be finishing that anytime soon. Um, on the channel anyway, because I've beaten the game several times before I even had a YouTube channel. Uh, what else? Uh, 
Uh, For Honor. I made a lot of For Honor emblems because that's just like creating. And like... I was also part of like the For Honor emblem Reddit. And that's just like looking at the... What was it somebody said? Um... Restrictions breed creativity. It was something like that. And I just really like how crazy, like, it, it is insane how crazily restrictive the emblems are in For Honor. But I think it's extremely, like, amazing seeing what types of emblems people can make with such a restriction. Like, I, I just see so many creative emblems in For Honor, and I'm just like, wow, you made that with only that amount of layers? That's crazy. And I just been dipping my toes to that. And then I started uploading more, like, creative, um... Emblems I made Like the MF Doom emblem that I made for Tekken and Tag 2. I thought I made that when I didn't have internet and then I forgot that I I had it on my USB So for the longest time I thought I lost that and then when I saw that it was on That still had it. I immediately just went to record and just recorded it and I was so happy to see that uh, my MF Doom logo survived. <laughs> and then I bought Black Op because it was on sale. And I just wanted to see if my emblems that I created on that game survived as well. Because originally what I was going to do is I was going to... Buy the game digitally, get on my 360 account, download it, and then see if my um, emblems that I made are still on the Xbox. But I got on my one instead, and I saw that all of my emblems are still there. And I was like, I was so happy. Like, you have no clue how happy I was to see all my emblems were still there. So I just immediately just made a, a video of all the emblems I made on Black Ops 2. Um, the Kevin Mask King one, that's one before they even announced Armor King. And I, I wanted, like, I was watching Ultimate Muscle at the time, so I wanted a, a Kevin Mask King look. And I just wanted, I wanted a, uh, not a Kevin Mass King look. I was watching Ultimate Muscle at the time, but I didn't have to do anything with it. I, I just wanted to give King, like, his own cosplay, I guess. Because I see, like, people are doing that. So I was like, uh... Oh, this mask looks like Kevin Mask. And then I was like, yeah, Kevin Mask King. And then that was it. <laughs> I wonder if anybody thought if it was like a mod or anything. Like make King look like Kevin Mask. But I'm... I'm happy with uh, just Kevin Mask King. Um... So then I made my um, Poetry of Fighter games. I did the Sagat one. And this was me still trying to get warmed up with the mic. I was trying to do voices. So I was like, oh, yeah, I was doing this voice because I sounded a lot like Sagat. And then apparently I just sounded bored on the mic. <laughs> because I was just doing it. 
I just recorded my vocals raw. Like I had no filter, no no EQ, no gate, no no anything. Or maybe I did, because my voice sounded weird. I legit don't remember. But... I, I guess... What... What I'm trying to say is... Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is, um, I keep making plans and I keep changing it. And I think that's a good thing. Because I started it off with the plan of making rhymes and playing fighting games and I try to do try to I try to do that I burned myself with fighting games because I was playing Injustice 2 I was playing Injustice 2 and I just burnt myself out. I died. Damn. I just burnt myself out. I plateaued. And I was only playing one way because I loved playing Bane. So I was just constantly... I wasn't changing up my... What's it called? My, uh, my play style. Because I was just like, I need to get in, I need to get in, I need to get in, I need to get in. I was never playing like footsies or range or anything. I was just like, need to get in, need an army, need to get in, need an army, need to get in. Like, that was my whole game plan. And I, I just hated the amount of characters that I had to fight. That was just extremely good with keep away and that really burned me out from injustice so then I decide to stop playing fighting game because I just got burnt out and I plateau and then I recently started playing injustice again but instead of playing Bane I started playing cyborg and I was having so much fun just because I switched up my gameplay, just the way I play. So now I'm playing fireball game. I'm doing setups with the death Roomba and having a lot more fun. And And that's slowly been getting me back to fighting games. Like, I've been looking up videos for, like, Thirst Strike. And I, I played a little bit of Thirst Strike here and there. A little bit of MK11, but I'm not... I can't find a character that I really like in MK11. I guess I'm sorry that I'm so scatterbrained. It's just so much I want to say. And I just don't know how to start. So I guess what I'm saying is it's good to have plans and my plans that that 
I had have changed. And that's because... And that's because when I executed the plan, and now where I'm at with the plan being executed, it's not what I wanted. Like I thought I did. So, when I had the attention of just making raps and playing fighting games, into just playing games that I just want to play, it got me... I'm not going to say nowhere because I have 15 subscribers and I have people eyeballs on my videos, but it hasn't been, fulfilling like it's not when I'm playing the games they're fun but when I'm recording and then editing because I'm trying to be more entertaining and then I just realized like f f like four months has passed five months has passed and I, I just been editing so like Three months of just going back on my Death Jam video. Three months of just editing the long version. And then a month just editing the short version. So I spent four months on just editing one type of video. And seeing the fruits of my labor is kind of, I guess, discouraging. And it's not fun, and I'm not really doing anything. Like, just besides just me looking at a screen and just not doing anything. So, I just don't know. So... I just decided to think back on what made me happy throughout this year. And me playing Def Jam, that was fun. But it's such a short term fun. It's not long term. Me. Making raps. Like, uh, I love. I love this YouTuber because he really taught me how to rhyme on beat because I was having a difficulty on it. His name is um, Coal Mines from ColdMindsStudios.com. I think that's his name of his YouTube channel. But he, he is amazing. And he just made me think of raps so, so differently than I do now. And, and I still like raps, but I like, because rap is an anagram for rhythm and poetry. But I think I just love the poetry more than the rhythm. Like the rhythm helps with songs. But I just like poetry more. So, so instead of me working on raps, I just want to work on poetry. And and instead of me working on fighting game videos. I think I just want to pick up a sport right now and just worry about my physical health. <laughs> because I've been moving around a lot more and I have a different goal. Like, I think if you've been on this channel, you realize how my uh, channel has changed. And I have this character. That character 
is a character I made in a wrestling game. And I see it as a goal of somebody I want to be. Someone who I want to strive to be. So I think I'm going to try to do wrestling. I, I know it's such a weird <laughs> like gap between being like, damn, I die. Between me being like, oh, I want to make a channel where I play fighting games and write rhymes. To now, I want to be a channel that just writes poetry and wrestling. And poetry, I don't know if I'm going to upload any more poetry besides the two poetry games. Uh, not, not poetry games. The two poetry videos, the poetry of fighting games for um, Sagat and Ziku. Because I have just a, what's it called? An Instagram for where I post um, poetry. And what I do on my Instagram is I take a poetic art style and combine it with a fighting game character. And I haven't done that for like, I don't know, the beginning of this year. So, I want to continue on doing that because writing rhymes and just poetry just really helps me mentally. Like, it's always been there for me, in a sense, even on my lowest. And I just want to continue on writing poetry. And then wrestling. And wrestling has just been like a a childhood dream of mine. Like, I don't think I'm gonna make it big. Like I, I think what I'm looking forward to what I'm looking forward to to it from wrestling or what I'm looking forward to wrestling. It's just a community. Like <laughs> like here on YouTube, I'm just a one man team again because everybody just has Everybody just has different goals of what they're looking for. Like I have a, a friend who's in the military, and I don't know what his goals are, but I know he's looking for to be in a romantic relationship. I have another friend who's trying to make a uh, beat, who is also trying to be in a romantic relationship. I have another friend who's going to college, and I'm planning to go back to college next um, next year. And so my dream of being a creative writer. And I feel like me going for creative writing and then trying to do um, Theater of the Oppressed, which is um, improv, and just working on writing creatively, I feel like that can help me with like story structure and creating characters, you know, and also just improvising because improv is really interesting. Like, it's kind of like sparring in a sense 
because it's preparing it's preparing you for situations that you're not usually going to encounter in life and just puts you into those situations like the reason why I'm so interested in doing improv is because I was part of this program and it was helping me where this guy was teaching me um theater of the impress and this program was just supposed to help you find a job and I was put in a situation where where um, I was the boss of this company, whatever company it was, I don't remember. Uh, but my employee always comes in late. So my employee was this old woman and she she was giving me a reason why she was coming in late. And what threw me a curveball was she, you know, she, she was, she doesn't work in the, in the program I was talking about. She's just, she was in the same situation as me. So what she did is she used her real world pain, the, her pain that she was facing and her reality and used that to, and use that feeling she had in the improv and that threw me a curveball i didn't like I, like to her i was probably like stone faced like i was not giving her anything but inside i was just like what 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 whoa whoa what the hell like i don't i don't know what to say and she broke the fourth wall <laughs> like she she went and Looked out to the audience, you know, because I wasn't giving her anything to react upon. And then the instructor, the instructor came and was just like trying to comfort her and all that. And it was just like, wow, is this how people feel when they meet a good actor? Like, that was so crazy. I've never been in a situation like that. And... I guess I just want to do more improv because improv is just like a, a sparring. Puts you in a situations you never thought of. By the way, the reason why I'm dying a lot, I'm trying to find the, the, the upgrade. So I want to do more improvs, or I want to start doing improvs. I want to go to college for creative writing. I want to work on my physical health. I want to continue writing more poetry of fighting games on my Instagram. And I... And I, I, I want to be a wrestler. And that's completely different of a goal than I was a year ago. And the thing is, I was not in a good place a year ago. And I just think about all the things I just want to accomplish, and they just don't involve YouTube. I just want to continue working on me. Like, I just want to focus on writing. Not just focus uh, rhyming on beat, but just poetry. I just want to focus on my physical health, which is exercising. Because I am physically a lot better now than I was last year, and mentally as well.
And I guess because of my... I don't have that mental problem that I had last year. I just find myself that I don't want to be a rapper anymore. Which is crazy to me. Because I had... I had... I had that mindset of becoming a rapper since high school. But I had this passion of becoming a wrestler since... I was a kid, and that completely changed when I was a teenager. And I even said it where I even said it when I was a teenager that I feel like a different person. Like the person who I was when I was younger feels like a stranger to me. I was looking at past photos of myself and I was just like, I feel like a stranger in my own body. And now that I feel way better this year than I did last year, I feel like I'm reaching back to what I used to be. So I'm just, which is good. Because I don't want to be a rapper anymore. I, I want to be a wrestler. I want to be part of a community. I want to feel physically good. I want to be mentally healthy as well. I want to do a bunch of... Sh I want to read books. A lot more books. Because I've been reading... Um, What book did I read recently? I read um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And that book really helped me. And I just want to keep reading more books. And I just want to play less and less video games. Excuse me. But the reason I just want to play less and less video games is because I just feel like video games are no longer for me. Like, genres I love, they're dead. Video games are going in a direction that I just don't agree with anymore. Like, I recently found out that there might be a new Shadows of the Damned game, and I was excited. So I'm interested to see if that's going to be a reality or not. Like, I was so excited that I I went on Amazon to see if I can buy a purple jacket, a purple leather jacket. Because I love Shadows of the Damned still. That's a fun game. And it's like, what, what other, I don't know. I don't know if I want to just name franchises that I love that are just gone. Like, of course, Def Jam. Icon. Just killed a franchise. Even though they were working on an icon too. And it was trying to make it better. Even though the Def Jam Twitter is just trolling people with the next Def Jam game.
<laughs> they got you by the nostalgia. I feel like that's the whole idea of game companies are doing like Agents of Mayhem is Saints Row. Got you by the nostalgia. You like Saints Row. I don't know. <laughs> this is annoying, but I really didn't like that every time I die, I would have to reread the audio logs. Before I can even beat the stage. <sighs> um, what else? So, yeah. A lot of my plans just doesn't involve YouTube at this moment. Maybe it's further down the road. But I did like the character that I made pain chicken. The wrestler that you see on my channel. That's who I want to strive to be. Because I met well, what is it? It's like trying to make a name for yourself. And I've just kind of been in a inspirational mood. Or I, I guess it's a mood. But it's like i just been like I, think, I guess just inspired. Like I knew someone in my co-worker in my work where everybody was calling him not his real name but it's the name that he has tattooed and he he spent a good because I think the name belonged to one of his family members and he's just trying to live up to that name so he's just doing his best to to honor that name. Like his name isn't what he's tattooed. That's not his like government name. But he just goes by that name. And I was like, wow, that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Like owning up or making a name. Like, like a mantle, you know, like, like I'm owning up to this name. Like, I'm not just naming myself this just because it sounds cool. I'm naming myself this because I have pride. I, I want to feel like I earned this name. I don't just want to pick the name just because like, just because it just sounds cool. <laughs> Like, it's, it sounding cool is a part of it, but I'm also doing things to, to earn it. And I'm just like, that's interesting. And then I was watching, um, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. The, the Miles Morales movie. And it was kind of, kind of doing the same thing. Well, not kind of, but it was doing it with the mantle of Spider-Man. Miles picking up the mantle of Spider-Man. I'm just like... Wow. And like his whole... Journey. Into becoming Spider-Man. And I've just been... Inspired by that. So 
so me so like I was inspired by by just by just having a name that you own you know like like it's a mantle like you 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 pick the name because you like it but you're doing things to make sure that the name means something and i'm like that's really sick you know and the character that i made on On wrestling that I use on my channel that I made that when I found out that La Parca not LA Park La Parca passed away and I didn't know about that for like several months because I didn't have internet I didn't have internet because that was that was last year. That was I would say that was, that was last year was like the lowest point of my life, which is crazy saying with the situation that we're living in now in this year. But like at this point in my life, I just stopped watching wrestling. But when I heard that La Parca passed away, that really, that really saddened me because I grew up watching La Parca. Like I grew up watching La Parca too and LA Park. And like that just brought back Memories of just me watching Lucha Libre and all types of res wrestling as a kid. So I made this character as like my own version of La Parca. So it has like the the Bane mask look. He's he has the poses like from JoJo because I really like JoJo. And, like, he's his own character because it's what I like. It's like my own... It's like my my version of, like, Miles' Spider-Man, you know? So it's like my version of La Parca. Like, a Miles version of La Parca. Because it just takes elements of what I like and just mix it together into not being a a a direct like rip off but just being my own remix you know just doing my own thing and the crazy thing is This is, this is like the point of my, my life where I'm just like trying to figure it out, you know, just trying to figure where I see myself in the future. So when I made this character, I didn't name him Bane Chicken. I just named him La Parca Bane. Because it was just... Me as La Parca. But then, when I made this character and I was playing it with my friends, two of my closest friends said they, they weren't in the same party when I, I when they said this. But two of my friends said, this is the most you character I've ever seen. And I was like, really? The most me character you have ever seen. And it's like. It's like yeah because like the, the design is so you. The 
the way he acts is so you. And like when you see this, he it doesn't like really bland the way he's dressed, but he's the way he's dancing, but he's so committed to it. Like he they just said like like this character is the most you character I have ever seen. And they both said that and they weren't in the same party, which interests me. And as I was playing the game solo, my my mother walked in and she was looking at my screen and she was like, you made that guy, didn't you? And I was like, well, yes, I, I did make this character. And she's like, yeah, I, I can tell that character just screams you. And I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, that, that character is so you. And I'm just like thinking to myself, three people who I'm close to just said this is the most you character. Like they both said, they all three of them just said this is the most you I have ever seen. And I'm just one and just thought about that and I'm like, this is the most me? Really? And I'm like, if three people said that, and all three of them are not in the same party, I, I, I'm interested. Like, like I'm baffled. This is what people achievement. I need more healing. I was just baffled. Like, really? This is the most me character you have ever seen? So, I completely changed my YouTube channel. And now I'm trying to become this character. If it's an unrealistic goal, I honestly don't know. But... I like the idea of working for my name, and if this is the most me character, I want to work to this goal. And if it is unrealistic, at least I try. So I want to make this character into a reality. And all those goals I told you earlier of me just doing exercise, reading books, and working on poetry. Oh yeah, I also want to take up dancing. So like, I have goals. I know what I want. I know the steps I need to take to get there. And I guess I know my gimmick. So I have everything all set. Not set for me, but like, I know the steps that I need to take to get there. And it's a lot more clear than me doing YouTube. So. I guess. This will be my last video for this year. And I just want to keep being the most me. Like there was this TED talk I was watching. Uh, it's by a wrestler named Cowboy Gator McCraw. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Cowboy Gator McGee, but I think it's McGraw. It's been a while I've been watching this TikTok. But he talks about being a wrestler, it's being you, but dial to 11, dial to 12, it's being the most you. So if people, the people who are closest to me are saying that this character is the most me, I want to be that. I want to, I want to be the most me possible. And for me to do that, I just have to get away from YouTube.
So I guess now I'm trying to find the last um the last upgrade. I I don't know how much of this I'm gonna edit. So I it's gonna be interesting. Um, so yeah, just me being the best me. And like, I've also watched, um, since it became a movie, Hamilton. I don't know. How, like, I don't know how um, to say this. Oh, but like, um, Hamilton is so dope. I watched that movie like four times this year, and I try to get more people to watch it, but it's not their alley. But I think it's so sick, like. The different types of rhyme, like rhyme schemes, like the rhymes, the the whole, like how modern it is, the 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 dancing. I think everything is so dope, and I just love that film, and I think that just encourages me more to proceed into like. I don't know, maybe theater, but also, like, just theater the impress, and just, I, I still want to keep writing rhymes, but I don't really am that focused into writing rhythm, but even though rhythm is important, but I just, like, it's just so sick. Ah, there it is. Found it. Um, that's a good bit. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this video. It's gonna be interesting. I'll try to cut the boring parts. Um, what was I talking about? I don't remember. <sighs> but. Yeah, I guess and the more this is going, the more I'm just like, yeah, this is going to be my last video for the year. Hmm. been a interesting journey I, I guess throughout my YouTube career or hobby
because I'm singing like I'm singing like a um I have an idea I'm gonna execute on that idea the idea was executed how did it turn out it wasn't as good as an idea as I originally thought so then I move on or that's not what I really wanted like I thought I did like Like, the reason why I thought I wanted to be a rapper, it was because I just played with the thoughts of being a rapper for hours on end. But I never asked myself if I wanted the the pain that comes with being a rapper. And I don't. Same with being a content creator. I I don't want the pain that that comes of being content creator. But I I am aware of the the risks and pain that comes in being a wrestler. But I'm okay at taking that risk, you know. Like I, I'm, I'm okay at taking that pain. I do wonder how many people go through. I guess it has to be a lot of people just trying to figure out where they're going, their their pathway. Because I, I met people who wanted to be like just famous on YouTube to the point where they have achieved what they wanted. But they're not happy. They're not tackling videos that they want to. And. It's like. Like the best way I can describe it. It's like chasing. Constantly chasing happiness. It's not what. Is good for you at the end because if all you do is just constantly chase highs of happiness then you're then that's to the same level of just chasing what makes you happy at the moment it's just a short-term goal of happiness it's not something that you're building upon. So like saying taking medicine or narcotics, like those are short term happiness, but building a career, working on improving yourself, those are long-term happiness like maybe they won't make you happy at the moment but down the road you will be happy because it's impossible being happy all the time but if you're like like I know the pain of doing this and I can handle that like 
Like, what was it? When I was working, I was only working for, like, uh, six months because that's what my contract said. But um, they were thinking about hiring me full-time. Like, if they extended my time, that would have guaranteed me working full-time. And I think I would have been in that job. Because I was, I think to this moment, I would have been working there if it wasn't for the whole C virus. And I would have been happy because I understood my job and I understood the pain that came with the job. And I was okay dealing with that pain. The stress that comes with work. Because I was receiving benefits of doing this type of work that I would not be receiving from if I was just trying to do YouTube. So it's like, what I'm trying to say is, it's like, okay, I I, I wake up in the 9 to 5. I only work for f five days out of the week. I get paid. Sorry for that. Mother needed my assistance. Um, what was that? Uh, I get paid for my hard work, and I'm also moving around. I'm not just staying at one spot. So, like, my work also requires me doing a lot of physical work. So, that's that's good because I'm moving around. I'm wor working. I'm waking up in the 9 to 5. So, I have, like, a, um, like, a schedule going on where I, yeah, like a routine. So I, I'm having a routine going on where I just wake up, go for work, come home, relax, you know, work what I want to work on. So you, you start building up a routine, you start moving around, you, you're getting paid, you're getting paid, gives you more flexibility on doing whatever you want to work on. And then because of the whole C virus, there's a a couple of downtime. So because of the downtime, you have more. Like. You still got to do what you got to do at certain times. But it's not overbearing work because there's not a lot of people there. Like it was when I was first working there. But I would have been fine if there was a lot of people working there as well because just, just trying to get a move around, you know, just don't want to be stuck in one area, just doing nothing. I just want to do my job. So then, like, you just start noticing benefits and just working. So, like, your physical help is going. You're, you're communicating or interacting with other people, you know, you're just talking about like hobbies, goals, and then that gets you thinking about, um, if you're accomplishing yours, uh, how far down the road are you accomplishing your goal? Like, uh, what's your game plan? Stuff like that. And you start communicating in like, uh, in a workplace, you know, but you still got to keep it professional. And like in the job that I was working at, they have 30 minute lunches, but they, they, um, understood that 30 minute lunches are annoying. So they give you our lunches. You just got to clock back before, um, before, uh, your time runs up. For your 30 minute lunch. But then when you clock back in. You, they give you an extra 30 minutes. Like you just figure out how the workplace. The workplace works. 
And then you just start adapting and you, you just... It's just... I feel like that's a lot better of an experience than me just trying to be a YouTube creator. Like, I just... I want to be around other people. I want to interact. I, I want a more physical job. I, I like talking. I like talking to people. Like here, I'm just the one man show. I'm just trying to entertain you guys with my mouth. Trying to trying to keep you satisfied with my mouth. <laughs> And it's just, I didn't want it to be just a one-man show. I, I had plans for my friends. And I was just building a community together. But that stopped being fun. And it's just like, with work, I can just do what I want. You know, like... Like, it's crazy because with YouTube, it's like if you have the time to create videos, you, you will create videos, you know, but on, but if you're making money, you just start thinking about like, all right, if I'm going to make a... Like, all right, I want to be a content creator. I'm not making any money. How am I going to make a a rap album? Or a, let's say just a video. All right, I can write the lyrics. Or I can hire somebody to make the lyrics. <laughs> you know? I can... I can make a beat. Or I can hire somebody who can take my vocals and put it into a beat. <laughs> and it's like you just start thinking more freely. And I forgot who said this, but it said, they said, like, you either, you either spend time, what was it? You either spend time to learning how to do something, or you just hire somebody to do it for you. And the things that I've learned from making YouTube are being, are transferable skills that I can take to wrestling. So I didn't really lose anything. So just being comfortable on the mic, just talking to people, like that's a trans, like I can transfer over that skills into wrestling. Like, I don't know how good my mic sounds right now, but, like, I'm using my, the, the muscles on my voice, and I'm constantly drinking water because, because I'm using my voice a lot. You know, like just having that um presence talking. And since this is just a one man show, I'm I can't bounce back and forth with somebody in a conversation like I could with my friends. And I also want to get better at this. So I feel like that's where improv will come, where I just become more comfortable and just more comfortable not in just talking but also just coming up with scenarios and dealing with situations that I just never thought about you know so it's just I'd rather deal with the pain of work than deal with the pain of being a YouTuber.
That's that's my that's how I feel right now. It's just seeing that um process through my channels. I I, I think is personally interesting. Well, you see, what was it? I originally named this channel Bane Tricking, and then I was inspired by one of my friends to use a animal, like a as a as a mascot. So he he was named like he he went with penguin I think, and then later he went to Yeti, or I think it might have been the other way around. But I was inspired by him being Yeti. So I named myself Bantrican underscore Kappa because this is during the time I was really sarcastic and I really like turtling or not turtling. I, I really like turtles. So like Bowser and and sumo wrestling I was into. And Kappas are known for like... Um, Kappas in Twitch form is known for being sarcastic. Uh, there's fighting game uh, terminology that I can use with Kappas. So like turtling or fishing, you know. And then there was, um, I had this whole space theme with it. And it was supposed to be like the turtle from It, Stephen King's It, or the Stephen King's Turtle. It just had a whole turtle theme. And like, I was going by the name Bencher King Kappa. And then... I stopped being sarcastic. Because everybody was telling me I was being too sarcastic. And I was just like, I know people are saying that I'm being sarcastic, but I don't know what the word sarcasm means. And I was being genuine. I remember I was talking to one of my friends about it. And I was just like, I know people are saying that I'm sarcastic, but I don't know what sarcasm is. And he, he was telling me, are you serious? And I was like, yes, I know it's something that I do, but I don't know what that is that I do. And he says, well, you have been called out for being sarcastic for not, and you weren't being sarcastic. And then we just like had a conversation about sarcasm. And now I understand what sarcasm is. So I just avoid being sarcastic and just be more straightforward with people. And it seems to be. I have improved a lot better with my uh, <laughs> relationship with my friends and family. With me just stop being sarcastic. Because now I knew what it meant. You know? And because I had a whole burnout and a falling with fighting games, I, I just was not feeling the kappa anymore. So, I just dropped the capo from Bantrican. Then I went back to my skull logo that you probably see on Instagram because I still have it on my Instagram. And that skull logo was inspired by... So... I wanted to be a rapper, and I was inspired by another masked rapper named MF Doom. So my original approach was to just write rhymes and not caring where it lands on beat. So I didn't bother to learn how to rhyme on beat. 
And I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna do what Doom does. And also, like, uh, the Wu-Tang Clan. Like, Wu don't rhyme on beat. <laughs> so, so I was like, alright, I need a mask that shows my love. That's like MF Doom's mask, but also shows my love for fighting games. And that was Shao Kahn's mask. But it doesn't have the helmet. And that was what I got the skull face on it. Which is crazy because this idea was before my Kappa idea. Because I think if you see on certain videos, the Kappa logo has the mask on its side. So I had the mask idea way before I had the Kappa idea. And the... This is... Before I was even going by the name Bainshikin, I was trying to figure out what I was going to change my name to. Because I, f I felt like that this... I wanted a name that represented the new me. And... If you hear my friends talking to me, they all say Joser. And that was the name that I was going by on Xbox for a long time. So, I was looking for a name and I was coming up with um, Master Key Bane. So, MK Bane. That was going to be my, my name from the Joser. Because I felt like the Joser name was just not me anymore. Like, I was rocking the Joser name when I was really into horrorcore. That's why you probably see the... The, the, the Call of Duty emblems that I made. You, you were like, what? Or the... My 2012... The WWE 12 video just shows that I was really into hardcore. But I don't really listen to hardcore as much as I used to anymore. And I just wanted a name to show the my, my progression or change. So I was going to be known as MK Bane. Or... Um, Either I was I was juggling between Master Key Bane or what was the other one? Master Key Bane or um I think it was Skullface Bane. But But I was playing um, DC Universe Online, and I was just chilling with, um, I was doing a mission just chilling with Etrigan, because he's a, uh, he's part of the mission, and he was just talking, and I knew about Etrigan since I was a kid, but something just in that moment just really clicked with me with Etrigan. I mean, with Etrigan. <laughs> so much so that I named myself Etrigan. The beginning part of Bane and the ending part of... I just connected the two E's, basically. The the E at the end for Bane and the E in the beginning of Etrigan. And I just became Bane Chicken. <laughs> and I remember in the beginning of my... In the beginning of my... Um, Rapping, I, I wanted to be, I, I had it like, uh, like, you know, like, Etrigan has like, who awoken, uh, who awoken the demon from hellish fires, I'll put you all in burning pies, and I, or he has his, um, the way he raps, raps, or rhymes, like, um, 
gone, gone, the form of man, arise the demon, Etric, and, you know, like, his, um, his rhyme for unleashing the demon, and I wanted to do that, too, just like, um, <laughs> what, what is it, it's, um, so, how did it go? Fuck. Um. How did it go? Um. Give me a sec, give me a sec. Fuck. What was it? Well, I don't remember. I remember there was one version where it was like, um, who awoke in the demon? No. It was, um... Gone, gone, the form of man, arise the demon, Bainture again, you know, like, just taking that, and then, uh, there was also another version, but I just can't remember at the moment, but it was like, um, MK Bane? No, it's like... MK Was it MK Bang? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm just getting so caught up in this tiny detail. Because I, I feel like I have it just right on the tip of my tongue, but it's just not coming out. Like, um, <laughs> oh, this is going to annoy me. Like, it's just been so long since I said it. But it's like, um... Yeah, I can't remember. It's been so long. Damn, I died. But it was like, um... It was something to the lines of, um... I guess... Who <laughs> woke in the demon from hellish fires? I just have that stuck in my mind. <laughs> Who woke in the demon from hellish fires? I'll put you all in burning pyres. That was so dope that Ashikin said that. <laughs> Bang truck again. But, um, yeah, I just don't remember. It's been so long since I said it. But, like, um, it's just, I'm sticking with the Bantrican name. Even though it's, like, the love of two DC characters that I have. Like the <laughs> the physique and mind of Bane, but with the 
the firing passion and rhymes of Etrigan. <laughs> Just mix into one. But yeah, it's just, it's interesting making ideas, executing on ideas, and now seeing all these ideas that I had throughout the years and where I'm at now. Going from the Joser to like the different stages of Bentrican. I was I was thinking of making an album this year, but my microphone, like I said earlier in the video, is just kaput. And I don't think I'm going to make anything else. Like, that's just hit the back burner. Or that's just landed on the wayside. But I, I am going to continue on making writing poetry on my Instagram. Where I combine a fighting game characters with different poetic art styles. I think I said that earlier in the video. Because I do want to get back into doing that. Um, yeah, I, I, is that everything I wanted to say about the future of this channel or like my history of this channel as well? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Don't really have, um, I think I, I laid everything out. A crazy thing is somebody who just wanted to see this challenge and doesn't know me is just going to be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Just here for the video games, man. <laughs> I doubt it. This video game gets like no views. Because I looked up other people playing this video game. And I've just been doing what I want. This is not idea for business. But I don't know. I don't want to think of it as a business. So I'm just going to take it as a hobby. Like I don't I'm I'm not even excited for the next generation consoles. I don't even think I'm going to get them. Like, I've just been 
not feeling game slightly. Like, I think it was yesterday that um, I purchased the Ghostbusters pack for f Fortnite. And I'm not happy. <laughs> like, like I, I wanted it because of Ghostbusters. I'm a huge fan of Ghostbusters. So like, I played the... What's it called? The 2009 Ghostbusters game? Is it 2009? Oh, let me look up the day. The the year the game came out. Yeah, 2009. And I joined the Ghostbusters community. I played the uh, Jean Quay's Ghostbusters outfit. I uploaded like several things to the Ghostbusters community that I follow on Xbox. Like, I just love Ghostbusters. But uh, once I bought the Fortnite Ghostbusters pack which cost me like 40 bucks because I got all the characters the the glider the pickaxe and then when it was all done I, was, I just felt robbed I was just like why did I buy this like this, this feels like just just for nostalgia, right? <laughs> like I'm just like, okay, I bought this because I love Ghostbusters, but like, there's no emote, there's no dance that comes with it. I can't, there's no, I can't interact with the backpack or the ghost trap. The outfits look pretty weird. It's not any of the characters I love. It, it kind of seems like your own... I won't even say OC, but like your... This is your character type of vibes. Because I think they have a character for different race. So it's just like, all right, but I'm just not happy with the purchase I made. I'm like, I could have bought like three video games, two or three video games with that money. And that just like enforces the direction I just don't agree with video games going. And then I wanted her to buy the Echo, the the Ecto One for um for um Rocket League, but uh, I was too early to get it because it wasn't in the store. And then I was too late to get it because it was only up for two days. And it's like, really? I I'm willing to give you money here, but. If it's true what my friend says that they want exclusivities for like it to be special, I just uninstall Rocket League then. I just don't care. <laughs> and then my experience with like what else? My experience with Destiny, I just I just don't care. My 
I hate what they did in Mass Effect, Andromeda. I was just so bored. I hate what, what happened to Sanctuary. Because I, f I feel like there was nothing there for me as a longtime fan. Which I'm not saying any of these games are terrible. I just I'm just saying that I personally don't care. Like it's just not for me. I've been playing a lot more indie games. Than um big budgeted games. No, going back to the conversation of I was going to make more wrestling challenges and then my um, WWF games just stopped working. I think I'm just going to upload at the end of this video the entrance of the one character that I really liked making when I was a kid and the one character I made recently just to have it out there in case somebody's interested. Because I don't think I'm coming back to my OG Xbox anytime soon. Like I had a blast making uh, videos, but I just don't want to keep going this way. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how my goals change. Um... <laughs> I have more fun playing this game than than Destiny. <laughs> I don't know how people will feel me saying that. <laughs> like I've been playing ESO. ESO is fun. It's just I don't care for the story. It's just yes, so it's not my type of game. Like I was hoping for like more, I guess Skyrim esque of an experience, and it's not that. It's more, I don't know, World of Warcrafty or uh, Diablo. No, it's not like Diablo. Is it like Diablo? I don't know. Like I, I played both of them. I was playing Diablo recently, and then I stopped. I was like, All right, I want to play uh, Barbarian, and I just want to jump around. I was going to do the Leap Earthquake build, but the more I played it, the more people who loved... um. Diablo wanted me to play more optimal because they were going for like the big events or harder high level shit and I was just like alright fine I'll, I'll do what you guys want me because I'm just trying to Fill out the 
team requirements. So I should should play my part. But then at the end of the Diablo experience, I was just not having fun because it's not the way I wanted to play. The same thing with Smite. <laughs> like, I'm just playing casuals and people are just coming at me for not playing my role. And I'm just like, this is arena. I don't care. <laughs> this is a casual arena match. It just seems like everything needs to be competitive. If you're not playing this competitively, then you're playing it wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, but I'm having fun, though. <laughs> I'm having so much fun, though. I'm looking for the last upgrade, if anybody's wondering. But yeah, I stopped playing Smite. I stopped playing a whole bunch of games. Um, I was happy to see. I owned it. I was happy to see that they brought back old DRC firefight for um, the Master Chief Collection. Been rocking that for a bit. So I'm happy about that. Just looking for secrets. Can't be too careful. Probably gonna make a video of all the upgrade locations and then upload this one. Oh, I saw that they I saw MK11 announced Rambo for their um pack two, and I was like, "Well, in MKX when they announced um Leatherface, I went and watched the first two Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, so." I decided to do the same thing here and um, the first Rambo uh, first blood that's a really good film I can see why people call it a classic I I can't bl do people talk about how great of a writer Sylvester Stallone is because I watched like the Rocky films, I think to three, and I watch the Rambles all the way to two. I need to watch the other ones. But Sylvester Stallone is a really, he's a great writer. Then, like the whole first Blood Ramp movie is amazing. <laughs> but when I finished watching First Blood, I was like, 
Really, MK? This is your guy? This is the guy you picked to be in your game? And then I watched Rambo 2 and I was like, ah, this makes a lot more sense. <laughs> and he goes, first blood Rambo being in Mortal Kombat. I was just like, really? <laughs> this is your guy? But according to people who love the Rambo movies, Rambo 1, like from best to worst, they, they talk about which Rambo movies are the best. So number 1 would be First Blood. 2 would be Rambo 4. Then 3 would be Rambo 2. And then 4 would be Rambo 5. And then 5 would be Rambo 3. It seems like people don't like Rambo 3 the most. And apparently Rambo 4 is really gore. And I haven't gotten a chance to see it. I'm only at Rambo 2. Because I watch... I watched First Blood. I was tearing up at the end. So I decided to take a break from watching the Rambo films. Because I was just nah... I was just like, I need to, I need to take a break. Like, this, this, that was really heavy. <laughs> what just happened? So I decided to watch um, Commando by Arnold. And that was just... <laughs> that was such a, like, uh, a whiplash tone to what I just watched with Rambo. That I just went back to Rambo 2. I just went back watching Rambo after watching Commando. Commando is a funny film though. A lot of one-liners. But yeah, I can't wait to check out the the other movies. Um, let's see what else. Play Diablo. Kind of done with it. Play ESO. Kind of done with it. Play Fortnite. Kind of done with it. Play the Master Chief Collection. Kind of done with it. I've bought... Doom Eternal, but I bought it since it came out, because I love Doom 2016, but I've just never been in the mood to play Doom. Hmm. Um, I'm interested to see what Rambo would play like in MK11. Like, I, I know they showed his gameplay trailer, but I mean, like, how he feels when you, you start playing him, like, once you control the character. And like with 
Melina and Rain, I'm just not excited for them. Like, like I, I played Mortal Kombat since Mortal Kombat One, but I'm just not excited with with Rain or Melina because I just never grew up with those characters. The same with Cabal. Like, I never grew up with Cabal. And people were excited that he came back for um, 11. <laughs> like, <laughs> when Cabal was in 9, I was like, who? Everybody was so happy that Cabal was in 9. <laughs> I'm just like, who? Like, I remember talking to one of my friends about Mortal Kombat. And then he was like, who's your favorite character besides, you know, Jax, Kano, and Sub-Zero? Besides those three, like, do you have any others? And I was like, oh, yeah, um, what's his name? The guy with the hook sword. And he was like, oh, Cabal. And I was like, who the fuck is Cabal? <laughs> who, who the fuck is Cabal? And I was thinking of Movado. From the 3D Arrow games. And I think he's dead in the MKX comics. And I remember really liking um, Sue Hao as well. But apparently I think I'm in the minority of that. <laughs> because not a lot of people like Sue Hao. And just... Get it straight, like the Mortal Kombat games I played in order was one, Deadly Alliance, Shaolin Monks, but I don't remember a lot that happened in Shaolin Monks. Mortal Kombat versus DC, which is Mortal Kombat 8, and then Mortal Kombat 9. That's all the Mortal Kombat games I played. As a kid. Because now I played 3 and 2. X and 11. It's kind of interesting. That out of all the... <sighs> Netherrealm games that... 9 is the only one you can't play in consoles. And people love Nine. Man, I love um Fer and Tor, and I was hoping for them to come back to you eleven, but they just disappear. And I was, I was glad to see Jackson Kano was in it. But Kano isn't as fun as he was <laughs> in 10, in my opinion. And I just don't like playing Jax like I used to. Is it me or is Jax? Command grabs really bad. Like I think Kano's command grab does more damage than than Jack's chain grab. Like I, I know that Jack's chain grab has a crushing blow, but it's just like That's just one time big damage. Like, I think Kano's is more consistent. Or it's just better overall.
Um, besides the Rambo movies, I've also watched the the first Silent Hill movie. I'm watching that because of October. And the first movie. <sighs> it was enjoyable. I think it's okay. But I don't really... I'm not really excited to watch it again. Like, I was just... It was dope just watching it one time. It's an okay film. Hmm. Also, I'm like in a weird situation with fighting games where I want to support the fighting game, but I'm just not playing them. Like I bought... I bought all the DLC for MK11. But I'm not playing MK11. I bought the DLC for Tekken 7. But I'm not playing Tekken. It's like I want to love the game. But it just doesn't love me. I want to love fighting games. Well, I'm just not having fun playing fighting games. Like, ugh. Tekken is fun, but the online is just terrible. <laughs> Mortal Kombat has great online, but I'm just not having fun with any of the characters. And I'm just looking for characters that just scratch that itch, you know? I've been thinking about getting Sam Show. I don't know. Um, I got the Street Fighter collection, and I can barely find people on that. But I am having a, a lot of fun playing that. Like um, playing Third Strike, Street Fighter Two. Like it's just been fun playing Street Fighter. There's just not a lot of people playing it. Which is understandable because they kind of just updated the game one time and just completely abandoned it. Which sucks. Like, I think the game can use a lot more support. But now that I have a um, a better computer or laptop, I downloaded Street Fighter Five, and I haven't played it yet. Haven't had time to, but I'm interested to see how it is. Um, any other fighting games I'm missing? Oh, the Power Rangers game. Any time to digest that? Because I'm I never been good at versus games. So like the Marvel versus Capcom games, and. I can't say DBZ Fighters because I haven't played it.
Man, I remember I wanted to record the the beta, the online beta for the game, and the beta was just so horrible. Yeah, I remember I wanted to record that for my channel, and I couldn't. Because there was nobody else fighting, it was just me chilling. So I've never been into the Versus series, except for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. But we all know what happened to that game. It was so crazy because I wanted to support that game too. So yeah, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I hope Tekken Cross Street Fighter is still a thing. I guess we'll need to wait and see. Because I hear people would just be cool to having like a Street Fighter DLC for Tekken 7. And I don't know what they're planning for Tekken. Because this is like the most popular Tekken's ever been. And that game does reward legacy play too. And I, I feel like I just. I feel like I just want to commit to a fighting game. Like, I've been watching a lot of Third Strike or um, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Or Street Fighter 4. Like, I just want to commit to a fighting game. But I don't want to just commit to a fighting game and be miserable. I want to commit to a fighting game because I'm having a lot of fun playing it. And I guess that's why I'm just spending a lot of money on DLCs and new fighting games. Even some fighting games that just doesn't have the player base anymore. I don't even know what I'm going to do with the other video games that I bought because I haven't played them. Like I bought Blasphemous. I hear great things about it, but I haven't gotten a chance to play it. I bought Bato Box because it's like a punch out inspired game. But I haven't gotten a chance to play it. Like, all these games I've named, I was going to record for the channel. But. I might just play it off. Off. Uh, off my channel. Also, I was going to do a Resident Evil 4 challenge where I play the game without using the handgun. I rebought Shadows of the Dam for I can play it on the hardest difficulty and upload it to my channel. But. What else games did I buy? I bought Slapping Beans. I bought the Beat 'em Up Collection. Um, I 
Hell point. I might. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I might play those games and just not record them. Because I was actually really excited for Hellpoint because I played the demo. The demo is really promising. And I just haven't had time. I guess it's just interesting where I see myself as a creator. I don't know if other people find it interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay. Because I don't know if you can speed run this game. But it, it feels like this game, especially this level, the stage, requires you to play in such a slow pace. And the reason why I bought this is because I thought it was a running gun. I bought so many running guns. I bought another running gun called Stain. I think that's what it's called. I bought another one. I think it's called Fury. I'll probably just show pictures of games that I bought. Probably. Oh no. Damn. I remember I wanted to do fighting games so badly that I bought myself a Razer RK stick. And I have used it. I used it to play Tekken and Injustice and Street Fighter. Excuse me. But like That's what I'm saying Like Just have all these ideas And then you, you, you commit to these ideas hard And then you realize Like towards However far along the road you are that Maybe this is not what you asked for, <laughs> you know? Like, maybe this is not what you want. Like, you do have a... A liking of what you're doing. Like, a... a like, a passion. But the level of your enjoyment... You should take consider. Like, yes, I love playing fighting games, but I, I never play fighting games competitively. I've only played to like a mid, to a low to mid level. Like I play all the fighting games that way. So I can't really say like, oh, yeah, I love fighting games so much that I'll just play. That I'll just play, um, 
play competitively. I've never played fighting games competitively. Like maybe online ranks, but that's as far as I'll probably go. Because there's a point where it reaches to a certain level of damn. It reaches to a point of a certain level where it just stops being fun. And it's like, like, I guess the what I'm trying to say is, are you willing to put up with the bullshit that comes with fighting games? <laughs> because a lot of fighting games comes with bullshit. And do you want to deal with that bullshit? And it's like, maybe. Is it fun? Is it fun bullshit? Like, do I think it, it's hype? Or is it just tedious? Like, do I deal with this bullshit and... Then what? You know, like, is this... Do I have to... Sacrifice my enjoyment... To play at, at this level? And for some people is yeah, of course. Others like myself it's I I like watching competitive players play. I've never thought about going to locals or anything. Never thought about playing competitively. I always thought about going to EVO, but not to compete, just to just to say I experienced EVO, because EVO is so dope when I was younger, you know? But now I'm just like, I don't know. I guess the point I'm trying to make is just trying to figure out if you truly want to pursue something. Think about your level of enjoyment of what you're trying to pursue and see if that would if that is what you truly want. It's like, I bought an arcade stick, not just because I wanted to improve on fighting games, but you don't really need an arcade stick to improve on a fighting game, because not every fighting game, you, you it requires you to play an arcade stick, and also there's a bunch of pro players that play just perfectly fine on controller. But I also bought an arcade stick because I was born towards the tail end of the arcades. Like, I, I have memories of me being younger, having fun playing Marvel 2, playing um, rival schools, you know?
playing uh, King of Fighters. Was it King of Fighters? I, I honestly don't remember. I remember it was one that had... It might have been Art of Fighting. But it was one that had um, Terry on it. And I just remember those experiences. And that's why I picked up an arcade stick. But now there is a... Damn it. But now there is a... Uh, a hit box? Or the mix box? Like, those are way better than the arcade sticks. But I'm not. Spending dough on a hit box or mix box. Because I just don't see myself playing fighting games like that, you know? Like, I don't see myself playing fighting games to justify the purchase of one. Man, you take so much damage. Same with my music. Like I have a, a friend. I don't think he's trying to pursue music anymore as well. But he he became a family man. And he was helping me out with um trying to find the right equipment for rapping and all that. And I was a hundred percent set on the idea of <sighs> being a a somebody who raps and plays fighting games type of channel so I bought my fuck what's it called my mic my Ben Benninger C1 mic, which is a studio mic, and I bought the the M Audio 2X2M, I think it's called, which helps with the phantom power. Then I bought my my mic stand and all that and. Like, I was dead set on doing this. Then I bought FL Studios. And I was just set on... I bought all this equipment because I was my mind was set on becoming a rapper. And I don't know how many years I'm in. Can't tell if it's five or four years. No, I think it's, I think it's like four or three years. That I've just been trying to become a rapper. And I never asked myself if I wanted the pain that it comes with. Like, I was following this YouTube channel. 
like they 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 were supposed to quote unquote help me with rapping, but I think after two years of following two YouTube channels, I felt like I wasn't progressing. Like I feel like I was in the same spot that I was two years ago than I was at that moment. So like, so because I I still didn't know how to rap on beat, but like they they give you advice like you should practice rhyming every day. You should use this um. If you have an uh, uh, if you use your phone as an alarm, you should use you should download this app. That way, when you wake up to turn off your alarm, you, you need to do mathematics, and th this will get your brain flowing. You know, like it was just like <laughs> a bunch of sweet nothings that they were just telling you to do because it just sounded good advice, but it doesn't do anything for you to establish your rap career, like. I didn't know how to rap on beat. <laughs> it's like, that's pretty important to learn if you're trying to be rapper. <laughs> so that's why I found Coal Mine Studios or Coal Mine. His YouTube is called Coal Mine Studios. But Coal Mine's like, he, he taught me how to rap on beat. And then he was like, well, if you, anybody needs help with like, um, producing their track uh, here's a different youtube channel that can help you with that and i'm like i've made more progression watching his videos in a month than i did in two years it was insane to me it was just insane Just just that just that and also I wanted to get better on creating thumbnails and like photoshopping and video editing. <laughs> like I, I just became one man because it's like, well, I either spend money or time and I had a lot of time. So I, I learned how to do Photoshop, learned how to use FL Studio, learned how to video edit. And I'm not saying that all that time I used was wasted. No, because of that. Oh, and I also learned how to market, you know, how to, how to do a research basically for like, um, your competition and shit like that. So YouTube has helped me out. And I have built the transferable skills because of that. Because I think you can see like the progression of my thumbnails. If you go from like the first thumbnail that I made, or like the first thumbnail would be the Doom one, so that doesn't have any thumbnails that I made. That's just like just me picking the end game, so picture that happened in the end game, like one of the pictures they recommend from YouTube, like a suggestion. And then the first one that I made with uh, Kevin Mask King, and then you just see the progression of me. 
changing images, changing how I want things to look. How to be presentable. And then working with FL Studios, you, you figure out how leveling works, how to not destroy your um, audience's ear. How everything should sound, you know? Because you acquire a deeper understanding. Like there was a um a book I read. If I remember the the book, I'll I'll place the cover here. But it was talking about this this guy who's a sore master that. He talks about the best way into, like, what was it? Like, you, you require, your knowledge of swords should not just be your, your sword train. It should also inquire you learning other skills from other from other places and then trying what you learn from those other trying to learn those other skills and incorporating it into sword fighting because you'll be amazed what you learn that way and what you bring to the table that way into this craft that you you love because you're learning from other I guess other genres or other things. So he was talking about like, if you're gonna pick up sword fighting, don't just pick up sword fighting, pick up pottering and see how that can influence your sword fighting or your source techniques. And apparently that, that holds a lot of truth. Like to, like if you're building, like if you want to be a, I was watching this video, this guy was talking about, if you want to be a, a, a pro wrestler, it's good that you want to be a pro wrestler, but also pick up other martial arts because they can help you develop your wrestling because you start Practicing new techniques and these new techniques can help you find new submission styles or you, you, you gain better training and understanding on whatever you're lacking on wrestling. So it's not just do wrestling, but do other martial arts as well. And there was another video that I watched of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was talking about how he was doing bodybuilding and this woman came to him and she said she's a ballet dancer and she can help him win more tournaments if if he follows her advice. And Arnold was like, I'm a bodybuilder. What can a ballet dancer do for me? So, Arnold was like, all right, let me give this a shot. And he learned about, what was it he said he learned? He learned about different body positions and how just moving a certain way can just increase your chances of, like, not injuring yourself when you, you like pull a muscle and and stuff like that and also like increasing your max potential on different types of like the way you move and and like it's crazy 
And he said that because of like her advice, he was winning a lot more tournaments. And he said that you have to keep an open mind on how to improve. Like if he he just kept like a close mind, like what what is she gonna teach me? I'm a bodybuilder and she's a dancer. She's not gonna teach me anything. Then he would never gotten better in bodybuilding if he didn't take her advice. And that's where I see where you two has taken me. It's like, well, I know how to advertise. I can do that in wrestling. I know, <laughs> I know how to, uh, how to bounce off of people, but I want to work on that as well. So I want to do theater of the oppressed. I want to work on myself physically because, like. This is the best shape that I've ever been in my life, and this is the happiest I've ever been as well. So, like, there's just a lot of transferable skills. Also, being just comfortable on the mic, I think I said that several times, I don't know. Because this is not scripted. Uh oh, controllers die. So, like, if you want to practice rapping, damn. So, like, if you want to be a rapper, don't just focus on just hip hop. But also, like, work on your, like, how do singers not get their voices hoarse, you know? Just work on, like, like, <laughs> like not using your, uh, all the, all the tensions on your throat. Also, like, try to use your diaphragm, you know? Like, pick up techniques from, like, rockers or singers, you know? If you're trying to be unique and bring your own flavor into it, don't just focus on hip hop. Because like people sampling, they they don't look with just hip hop or they can sound from hip hop, but like from jazz or any other genres and just blended it into a way they like. Uh, there will always be trans transferable skills.
Ooh, that was a nice shot. <laughs> but, yeah, that's... That's, um... Really all I had to say about it. Like, I don't feel like YouTube was a waste of time. I don't feel like like that at all. I learned so many things from YouTube that I didn't think I would on my own. But it's always asking yourself the important question of if this is 100% what you want to do because at the moment you will say yes and I think the better questions to ask yourself is is this the pain that I want to deal with and then make a list of all the pain that it takes to do what you want not just looking at the benefits but looking at the struggle and asking yourself do I want to deal with that struggle and it took me this long to realize no but the important thing is is that I realized it because even when you're starting what is it even even if you're starting like like me um when I decided to become a wrestler I was 25 25 and I was just like is it too late for me to be a wrestler is it like becoming a dancer like being a dancer you, you pretty much what age is it that you, it, it, that dancers retire? Like, I, I hear dancers retire in such a young age. Like, I think it was 30? And I was like, I think, I, th I think that's the same for wrestling. And then you, you start realizing, like, shit, I hope I didn't miss my opportunity of becoming a wrestler. So then I, I look, I look up on read it and see is it too late for you for me to become a wrestler at 25 and then i see that a lot of people had that same thought as me like yeah i just realized i wanted to become a wrestler is it too late for me and then you realize a lot of wrestlers don't don't start wrestling not not every wrestler starts in a young age like i think I think DDP started at 30. So that knowing that not every wrestler starts in a young age gives me hope. And now I'm 26 and I'm making strides for myself towards the end of this year and next year. Like, I'm going all in on this idea. And... And I know the pain that comes with it. And I ask myself, do I want to do this pain? Uh, uh, do I want this pain in my life? And just like work... Yes, I see the negatives. But those negatives will come a lot of positives, you know, like there's a lot of benefits to those negatives, in my opinion. So, yes, I am willing to risk, take the risk. <laughs> RPG incoming.
so there was another video I was watching. I think it was by the Gang Rumps. And they were talking about what was it? Fun or interesting? Like things in life for everybody needs to be either fun or interesting. It needs to be either one of those thing one of those two things or both of those two things. Or both of those two things. It either has to be enjoyable for the person. Or it, it gets them to think like, oh, I never thought of that. That is interesting. Or, oh, that's an interesting concept. You know, like, it, it needs to get the person thinking. So it, it either brings them joy or it just brings a new perspective and ways of thinking. And... If you're trying to pursue like making a video game or I think they were talking about making a video game. It needs to be either fun or interesting. And I, I just thought about that as like what if I live like if, if I had like, okay, so I, I am committed in being a wrestler. Is it fun? Yeah. Yeah. I remember wrestling as a kid, and I was having a lot of fun. All right. What do I find interesting about it? I find everything about wrestling interesting, but if I had to pinpoint, I guess it has to be the storytelling, the techniques, and the persona that each individual wrestler brings. Because I find those, like, individuals, what the individual brings, quite interesting. And it's like, even though we're... Even though we're part of a wrestling, like, collective, we can still bring our own individuality to it. And also, you also have support from the other wrestlers. Because you all are trying to be unique but you're also a family and needs to be i guess supportive is what i'm getting it and i just find the whole wrestling i guess Lifestyle interesting. So I find wrestling fun because it's like it's like physical. How do I say this? It's like physical theater. You know, like you guys are taking bumps and bruises, but it's all. agreed upon on both sides or it's both like I guess stage is just the word I'm looking for but like the bumps they take is real so it, it's like a th I don't know I just find it more because no other sports is like this you know like Like, 
Like this is my character. My character does this. This is this isn't me. This is just a character. Like I get to take a break from being myself, or I can be myself and you know. Like I find that interesting. And then like learning new techniques, learning. the wrestling ter terminologies like there's a bunch of shit i find interesting about wrestling but also doing wrestling i find it fun so i'm just gonna proceed proceed i'm just gonna pursue it not proceed so i guess if you're Trying to figure out what you're trying to do is just ask yourself, are you willing to take the pain that it comes with it? Do you find it fun or interesting or both? And then if you have ideas, always... Always try to execute on those ideas because everybody has great ideas all the time. Everybody has ideas that is better than the other person. But if you can't execute on those ideas or expand upon those ideas, then they're useless to you. Like... If you have a great idea for an intro for a video, but you don't know how to execute the intro for the video, then you can't make it happen. So it's a useless idea to you, <laughs> you know? So it's like, you either learn how to make it happen, which might involve you, might involve you learning a a new program, which might involve you spending money on the new program, which might also involve spending how many hours it'll take for you to accomplish this dream, for you to like time, how how long is it gonna take for you to learn this? And since things take time and everybody's trying to rush it, it's gonna it's not gonna be a pleasant experience. So you either go for it or you realize I can't I can't execute this idea. I have to move on. Or just pay somebody. Just <laughs> like I guess the best way I, I can describe how I feel is like the cartoon Bojack Horseman where Bojack talks about how every thing he does has to matter but when you get to the end of the episode, you realize the in the moment what we perceived as the most important thing at the moment isn't as important as we claimed it is. You know, like, what was it? Bojack was trying to win an Oscar. And he says, if I win this, I am legit. If I win this, my life will get better. You know, like, this, this is this is the most important thing in my life, you know? Like, this, this object would change everything if I accomplish it. And he gets the, he gets, he gets the Oscar or the award. And then you realize... As the episode keeps going, that 
nothing really changed. It wasn't as important as you perceived it was. So it's like, well, do you want to build this amazing intro that you have in your mind? Even though you're spending money on equipment or time learning how to do this for something you're perceiving at the moment to be really important. Even though, are you planning to use this ever again? Like this program ever again? Are you... Are you planning to do more things with it since you, you started learning how to use it? Like... Like, when I was making raps, I was like, I gotta learn how to make a beat. And then I realized I hate making beats. <laughs> like I, I, I just don't enjoy making beats. I rather just take royalty free beats and just rap over them. Like I do not want the, the pain that it comes to make a beat because I'm already just heavily focused on just vocals. And it's like people who who make their own beats, write their own lyrics. Like that takes a lot of time to do. And it's willing to do it if that's what you want. It's like I'll learn how I'll learn how to make a beat. Because I'm not just planning to make just one beat. I'm planning to make several beats down the line. Uh, I'm learning how to how to rhyme on beat. So I'll, I'll work on my rhymes as well. But I also, since I'm learning how to rhyme, I'll achieve it. Full story. I also craft the rhymes around the beat or vice versa. You know, since... You're learning how to do that. But if you don't like making beats, then you're, you're, you're either going to hire somebody to make a beat for you, but then that's going to get expensive unless you have a homie that, that likes making beats or somebody you know that likes making beats. And then you guys can just... Explorer, you guys can just compliment each other, and it's crazy when one artist can just do both of those things because you realize how much time and dedication that it takes, but you also realize how important producers are to the artist. Like, like I, I mentioned how much. I listened to horrorcore back then, so I used to listen to a lot of ICP, and I always loved the old albums they made, and then I, I start listening to Behind the Paint audiobook, and how much the old music they made, the beats were made by Mikey Clark, and I'm like, wow, I really love Mikey Clark, and I never realized that until I started messing with music so like for me it's like mikey clark and icp is the best match made in heaven you know or um premiere and guru like i can just i can't picture guru without rapping on a dj premiere beat like they they complement each other so much or it's like rizza not making a Wu a Wu Tang Clan album. It's like I can't picture Wu Tang Clan style of rapping without without RZA type beats. 
Now you start realizing how important producers are is not just rapping. Then, so it, it's up to you to realize if you want to if you want that pain, and then you need to ask yourself, What am I gonna do with the skill that I learned? And that's what baffled me, bringing this back to earlier in the video, that people just want to be YouTubers. Because that doesn't really mean anything, <laughs> if you think about it. Because you're not saying, I want to get better... I want to be a YouTuber just saying, I just want to be famous. So it's like, okay, you want to be famous, how are you going to be famous? You want to be a YouTuber, how are you going to be a YouTuber? It's just, you're not really saying anything by saying you want to be a YouTuber or famous. It's like, well, I want to be famous at singing or I want to be uh, known for my editing or I want to work for... Editing for a YouTuber or something. It's not just... It's not just like a... An empty... Yes, statement. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Well, how are you planning to be famous? Well, I'm planning to just kill myself for views. And you want that? Well, yeah. I'll start eating, I don't know, deodorant or something. You know, getting the final one like that. It's like, whoa, whoa. All right. At least you know what you want. Or, 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 um, you, you want to play video games, but playing video games is, uh, pretty difficult. Because the bar for playing video games has, has went up. That's the thing, you, you also have to think about the bar going up on any anything you, you, you're trying to do. Because it's like, say, <laughs> like say if I were to make a, a video game console, right? You have to, and... All right, say I, I wanted to make a video game console and and, and, and you, you buy it, right? And you go, bro, how, like, this video game console doesn't have an HDMI cable or an HDMI port. It, it just uses, <laughs> like, the, the red, blue, yellow, and white uh wires you you'd be like what the hell and then I, I just go bro why are you sweating me on that like 
Look at the like look at the Super Nintendo or the Genesis, like that didn't have HDMI cables. You're gonna be like, bro, get with the program. <laughs> like how are you gonna how do you even do this? <laughs> like like how how is this even possible for you to make? Like the bar has risen in technology. You need to get with the bar. You need to get with the program. <laughs> so like <laughs> So you're going at it like, all right, I'm going to learn how to rhyme. But if you're rhyming, you you need to get, I guess, with the times well, when it comes to rhyming. So if you're trying to do like, um, what's it called? Sore style? Is that what it's called? Like that, that type of rhyming is dead. I think it's called Sword Style. I, I legit don't remember. But it's like... That type of... Of rhyming where... It, they just go like, um... <laughs> bigger, 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 back, back. Bigger, 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 back, back. Like, that type of rhyming just stop. And you need to get with the times. And it's not also just Gang With The Times, but also being a remix. Because you, you have to learn how to stick out from the crowd. So you have to juggle the old with the new. So it's like, maybe you can bring something old, modern, for a new sense of sound. You know, so it's also being a remix. So you, you need to get with the the bar increasing. And you need to figure out what increased with that bar. Like. Like wrestling now. The bar has increasingly went up. Since like wrestling back in the early 2000s. It's completely different. Wrestling now to compared to wrestling back then. Like, what was it? I was watching a video. I forget the name of the old school wrestler. I think his name was Magnum. But he was talking about how he... Like, his finisher was the suplex. So, he was talking about how when he did the suplex to you, it was a one and done. <laughs> like, he did the suplex to you, you were on the floor, that was it. It was the the ultimate, like, it was his uh, finisher, you know, it was just done. When you get suplexed by him, that's it. You ain't kicking now. But now... He was talking about Brock Lesnar and how everybody knows Brock Lesnar for sending you into Suplex City. And I thought this was an interesting thought. But like he was talking about like how his kids were talking about how Brock Lesnar's Suplex must he must be doing something wrong because he has to suplex the person over and over again and i don't agree 
with the mindset, but I did find it interesting that there was a difference in perspective of two people doing the suplex and both of them being known for doing suplexes. So it's like suplexes is is in a lot of wrestlers like moves list. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of wrestlers would do suplexes a lot more are, are in their, I forgot the word I'm looking for, but a lot more wrestlers do suplexes now, but the way Brock Lesnar does a suplex is a remix of something old like the suplex, but also bringing a new flavor to it. So I don't agree that there's a single right way of doing the the gimmick of the suplex. Like... I'm not talking about the technique. I'm talking about what people love about the suplex because the bar has risen. So like another example is like um, Jake the Snake. People talk about how Jake the Snake DDT was all he he needed. Like when, when Jake the Snake DDT you, that was it. It was the end of the match. Like, you, you are not getting up when Jake the Snake DDTs you. But now, a lot of wrestlers have the DDT in their moveset. And they throw DDTs around. Like, the bar has risen. Because it takes a lot more than just a DDT to be... I guess, either impressive or memorable. So, like, wrestlers do tornado DDTs or... Uh, fuck, I forgot the name of the DDT. But it's like they, they, they flip over you and do a DDT. They they spring off the jump. They spring off the ropes and do a DDT, you know? Like, the DDT, wrestling, the bar of wrestling has increased. So you have to... You have to <laughs> you have to be in the you have to be in the new incre- like barred raised wrestling. So like you can't just go into wrestling now and just like do what you could back in the eighties, you know? Like Depending on your gimmick, I guess. Because there's a lot more high flyers now in wrestling. Not saying that there's no, like, um, technical wrestlers. Because technically all wrestlers are technical. Just some better than others, I guess. But there's not a lot of ground wrestlers. And you have to go with the bar <laughs> so you you have to constantly keep in mind on how the bar was raised <clears throat> sorry if I'm like rambling or repeating myself is this is just not scripted this is just off the head off the dome And it's like, damn it. And it's like, the way the bar has risen for, or the level of the bar for video games, where is that? I'm just not enjoying it. And it's like, what do you mean by that? And it's like, I guess the... The loot boxes, the microtransactions, 
you know, those things, because... My friend described it to me perfectly. He was playing... He loves playing Assassin's Creed. And I think he bought... The one where they're Spartans. And he said that... He snuck up to an enemy. And... They did a stealth attack. And it did huge damage. And that was a problem to him. I was like, what do you mean? Well, I'm playing Assassin's Creed. Usually, when you do stealth, it's supposed to kill. <laughs> not just do big damage. I wanted to kill it. Not just do big damage. <laughs> like, Assassin's Creed just changed. And you see that with just gaming in general. Now, it's like... A lot has become... A numbers game. And it's like a numbers game to the... Like... To the extent of like how much... Players... Is playing your game for how long. And how long are the players playing. How much damage are you going to do. You need... To grind. To... Like... I'm just not with it. <laughs> but it is something that you should keep in mind. Because people always say you got to be original 100% of the time even though I personally don't believe in originality is that what I'm trying to say like I believe in remixes like everything is a remix uh, I don't believe in 100% original. Like, an idea you had must come from somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So, that idea you had is either a remix of an already existing idea. Like, what was it? The idea of um the game boy or the game and watch like yes the game and watch it's like the first correct me if i'm wrong it's like the first digital handheld so you can just take it and play games on a go digitally but the idea of the Game & Watch came from a guy. Uh, some guy was looking at another guy just playing with his um, calculator. So the Game & Watch was built on the idea of another idea. But it became quote unquote original because it was the first video game, but the idea already existed. Even it's not an original idea, but it was an I a remix, you know. It's like building a calculator, but instead of for math, it's just for games. And like, Dark Souls as well. People say it's original, but Dark Souls builds its ideas around other 
like franchises. Like Dark Souls is a dope experience, but I see it as a, just a remix. Or um, Batman. Everybody loves Batman. Or not everybody, but a lot of people love Batman. But Batman is just three ideas mixed into one character. Like what, what was it? He's the shadow. He's Sherlock Holmes and Zorro, if I remember correctly. So, like, Batman is just a remix of other superheroes. Like, he's not 100% original. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's where I stand in all this. Of just remixes, not a hundred percent originality, but bringing inspired by something and also bringing your own ideas to it. I'm done with that. <laughs> nope, nope, <laughs> I was, but then I took a hit, I'll come back. You really got to think about this. Ooh, ooh. Dunzo. <laughs> Get me out of this hell hole. <laughs> I miss somebody? There he is, he's escaping. Wait for him to come down. Oh, there he is.
So, this is interesting because this is the first time I'm recording with my headset and also I can hear myself talk so I don't know how this is gonna sound when when uh, everything is all done but if my mic sounds weird, it's because I'm using a headset, not my um, microphone. I appreciate anybody that stick stick through it all the way to the end. Um, shit. I... I, I hope with my, what I've been talking about throughout the video helps anybody in a way. Damn it. Because... It's just my own personal growth and what I've been picking up. So I hope it benefits somebody as well. So, since this is going to be the last video I upload for the rest of the year, I hope that everybody has a good Halloween, a good Thanksgiving, a good Christmas, a good Kwanzaa, a good New Year's, and... If your birthday is coming up, I hope you have the best birthday. <laughs> I hope you're surrounded by all your, all the people that care about you. I hope you're surrounded by your loved ones. And I hope everybody takes care in this really crazy time that we're living at the moment. And... I hope you find what you are willing to suffer for in life or what you're willing to take the pain on. And with that, thank you for watching. Oh wait, there's a second phase I forgot. Um, <laughs> I legit forgot that there was a second phase. But, I know this game isn't popular, I know I don't have a lot of views, but I'm greatly appreciated that you stuck, watched the entirety of the video, even with its, damn it, even with its um, quality. And if I'm talking weird, it's because I can hear myself again, <laughs> just stating.
Oof. Taking shots. Um, anything else? Nah, I guess not. I just really enjoyed my time with this game. And I guess I just enjoy um, indie level develop games more now. And I'm not playing a lot of fighting games like I used to. And that's okay, I guess, because you change as a person as time goes on. So you realize what seemed important to you when you were younger, just it's not as important as you were making it out to be. And I'm not saying to give up on your goals or dreams. I'm just saying, whatever you learn, make sure that whatever you, you try to build yourself on or you, you're trying to reach is to make sure that What am I trying to say here? Um, I had it and then I lost it. I'm not trying to say that you can't. I'm not trying to say that you, you don't reach your goals. But to realize the difficulty and the challenge that you will face and to constantly ask yourself, if this is what you truly want to be doing. Just constantly keep that in mind, you know? Damn it, so close. Just be whatever. Okay, I realized what I wanted to say. Whatever you choose on doing, always be adaptable. Adaptable on your situation. There is this children's story called Who Stole My Cheese? And the whole premise of the story is that you need to move on. You need to adapt to your surroundings. Instead of being fixated on how it used to be. So like, like there's this guy and they know where the cheese is. This is like a huge amount of cheese. 
So one day the cheese just disappears. All the cheddar is gone. So the guy goes, like, I, I don't, I don't want to look for new cheese. I want how it used to be. Like the cheese was just here. I don't want to look for cheese. I don't want to. Like the environment, the situation has changed for him, and he doesn't want to change into what he needs to be for him to move on. You know, for him to to. To move with the environment, you need to be adaptable. But he's like, no, I want the cheese to be here. I want all the, I want the how it used to be. It was simpler how it used to be, and people around you would just start to move on. They, they start adapting with the 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 world. It's gonna move on with or without you, and it's up to you to adapt to the situation. And what I'm saying is whatever you pick, whatever your dream job or whatever pain that you're willing to take is just make sure to be adaptable. <laughs> because things happen where I used to be, I used to want to be a rapper, but I just want to be a poet. And or or you just find that there's something else that you really like doing. And also people I, I, I don't get it, but people say well if it's if it's I want to do something difficult and because it's difficult for me, that means it's better. Like I have a friend who can make beats but he can't make he can make dubstep beats but he can't make any other beats easy so he's taking the hard route and good night <laughs> just go with the path with the least resistance just because it's not just because it's easy for you doesn't mean it's hard for somebody else. It's not hard for somebody else. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> and I hope you all have a great rest of the year. Oh. <laughs> Achievement. And don't forget. Here's the wrestling entrance. I was working on, on the character I made and the character I made when I was younger. And thank you and good night. Have a great rest of the year. Nobody, damn right, can't quit getting rowdy. 